A seal the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for us to check out the papers. We call it Off the Press, and we have Ezekiel Yaitok, who joins the conversation. Good morning, Ezekiel Yaitok. It's good to have you join us, and Merry Christmas. Good morning, and Merry Christmas to everybody in Plus TV Africa. That's all right. Thank you so much. We start off with a daily independent newspaper. And uh, as always, we would be looking at the big stories on the daily independent. The banner caption reads, Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Senate to consult with reps. Response to Buhari in January. That will be in 2022. Passes 17.12 trillion naira budget for 2022. Adjourns plenary to January 18. National Assembly to transmit 2022 budget today. Lawan is quoted on that. I mean, this is a writer's you have underneath the board caption. You also have APC Scottle Electoral Act Amendment for fear of 2023. That's what the PDP is saying. Ensure electoral bill becomes law. Saraki urges NAS. And a boy governor inaugurates a Bubeagu regional security outfit. 2022 budget will be difficult to fund, says CPPE. You also have another bold caption here. Federal government okays full implementation of new national development plan. Buhari administration, most economically inclusive. The uh, Nigeria's Governors Forum quoted on that. The Federal Executive Council okays 5.7 billion naira for agri sector. And uh, Senate approves Buhari's 276.8 billion naira vehement request. I hope I got that correctly. And just before we move away, NMPC rakes in 203 billion naira from petrol product sales in January. And EFOS promotes 29 air vice marshals and 31 air commandos. Uh, this is some of the headlines on the Daily Independence newspaper this morning. And now to the Punch newspapers. Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Senate backs down on overriding Buhari, refers a bill to constituents. We will consult our constituents during recess. They have a role to play, says Lawan. Buhari rejected bill in order to rig 2023 poll and APC plans to manipulate results, says the PDP. Also, verification, federal government in introduces digital token to replace 11-digit NIN. Petrol subsidy rises, hits 1.16 trillion in 11 months. Also, and uh, we can also find a National Assembly to transmit a 17 trillion naira budget to Buhari today. 12,547 patients in isolation centers. COVID-19 cases increase by 847%. Also on the punch this morning, uh, federal government rakes in 2.56 trillion naira from petrol, kerosene, and diesel sales in 13 months. Federal government declares Monday and Tuesday, January 3rd, also as uh, U Tide and New Year holidays. DSS operatives kill admission seeker, suspect released after order from above. And uh, Magodo residents protest planned demolition of buildings as they barricade their gates. Um, I think that's all we can take or we will be taking this morning on the Punch newspapers. Away from the Punch newspaper this morning, let's check out the Guardian newspaper and the bold caption quite different from what you have on the Punch and on the Daily Independent. COVID-19, Nigeria records highest single day infection. That's what you find. There are several riders underneath. We'll just take a few of them. Four deaths, 2,123 new cases. As Yuletide festivities heighten, you also find Delta State reports 395 cases of Omicron variant. Vaccine inequality booster programs would prolong pandemic. Uh, you have the WHO lamenting. Consensus Nigerians may need a, f may need a fourth dose of vaccine to ensure pr protection from Omicron. Experts insist country remains vulnerable to mass fourth and more waves of the variant. Uh, that's it, uh, away from the bold caption. Bandits abduct 70 traders on Kanu Kaduna Road. And government unveils five-year blueprints to refocus economy. Senate passes and raises budget by 800 billion naira to 17.126 trillion. 
Gunmen kill seven persons, abduct five women in Katsina. Electoral bill, Senate halts action to override Buhari to consult reps. These are the headlines on the Guardian newspaper this morning. And now to the leadership newspapers, State of the Nation. Convene reconciliation confab now. OBJ, Sultan, tell President Mohamed Buhari. Say insecurity dri driven largely by social injustice and failed economy. 1999 Constitution lacks principles of justice, fairness, and equity. Uh, we can also find here Oshun, APC leaders unite to unseat Oyetola. Uh, we spend 30 billion naira on NPAR monthly. Military promotes 233 generals and others. And um, electoral bill, senators chicken out on overriding President Muhammad Buhari as they pass a 17.1 trillion naira budget. Um, all right, I think we would stop here also. Uh, Mr. Ezekiel Nyayatok, good morning once again and thanks for joining us. Um, the big one, of course, that has made headlines in uh, most of the papers is the uh, National Assembly and the, uh, the steps that they are taking after the president uh, failed to assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. It says here that senators chickened out. Uh, do you agree with um, that term? Yeah, um, uh, chickening out is more of um, too much of a plus for them. You, you chicken out when you had the lever to at least attempt. I never thought they even had any lever to as much as attempt because this is a situation where Mr. President says jump and their question is how high. So the thought of them um, overriding the president was actually a thought that um, was more infuriating to the people. You know, I don't know if they try to find out what Nigerians think of the National Assembly, there are certain statements they will not even bother to make because we just feel that they are a rubber stamp, you know, and every day they give us more costs. But you see, that's not as important as the fact that we really don't understand a lot. The National Assembly doesn't seem to understand what election is. They, to them, it's like a game. It's like a play. But the most important thing in a company is the choice of the management team. A man gets into an office or he gets into a company, and all of a sudden, the company is turned around for good. Another person gets into the office and all of a sudden the company starts, the fortunes of the company start to decline. Election is not the leadership recruitment process of Nigeria. Election is the selection of the management team of the Nigeria project. Now, it's only commonsensical, it's not rocket science for you to know that the super eagles today are looking for a coach. And there's a process of re recruitment of a coach because they know that the fortunes of the team depend on the quality of the coaching team. These are simple things we know. Then please let Nigerians know that election is the selection process of the Nigeria project management team and that the Nigeria project management team determines what our life is going to be as a people and as a nation and take elections serious. Now, the, the Senate is more interested in passing the budget. It means that they have no understanding of the concept of prioritization. You can't, you can't in any way bring the budget close to the management team with respect to priorities. As a matter of fact, this is one project that they will need to work on Saturday and Sunday, knowing two things, and this is very important for Nigerians to know. First, the Senate refused to take the electronic transmission of results. That's number one. Number two, all of us in the civil society rose and mounted the level of pressure that is almost unprecedented. And then I'll say, they went back to their cocoons and it's like, two can play. So they say, okay, you want it, we give it to you. And clandestinely, they put in something that they knew, up initial, they knew from the beginning. 
will not fly. Now, while this was going on, the National Assembly, the presidency through the presidential liaison officer that he has, the attorney general through his oversight function knew the law, they knew what was going on, they played the game. So this is a game between these people against the Nigerian people. That's my understanding. When they finally sent the bill to Mr. President, Mr. President on his own part started the second part of the game where he left it. Meanwhile, he knew when the bargaining was going on, he knew when the debating was going on, he knew when the discussions were going on, he knew every single thing, but he kept it for 30 good days. After 30 days, he says, oh no, we can't do it because of, and this is a president that a text message to the Senate president the night before the bill is passed, Attorney General would have said, what's going on? You know, Organo go sign this, you know, you people should check. Don't do this. If there was sincerity of purpose, no, that was not done. Then they brought it and kept it for 30 days, the maximum stretch, and sent it back to them when they were supposed to be very busy, about to go on recess. In fact, they were so unfortunate that the 30 days did not move into the recess. So when God helped us and the 30 days did not get into the recess, the Senate did, and then the National Assembly, all they needed to do was, what are you going to do? You've consulted, you've discussed, you've done everything for years, six years, you've been on it. All they needed to do, okay, Mr. President, if there was sincerity or purpose, you don't like this clause, we expunge it, and one from one of the National Assembly members, what he said was that this is our thing maximum, because they already have a, a clean copy of the version that was to be sent before this um, nocturnal thing was introduced. So he just put it back and sent it back to him. And by today, Mr. President, having seen that his objection is would have assented to it, no. National Assembly kicking in their own second part. And what is the second part? Oh, we go and consult, and in January we'll be back. When they come back in January, they'll take a while to go through it, will we, will we not, yes or no, and all those things. And then they will send it back to me, Mr. President. Mr. President will take his good time again to see whether those things align. And do you know what happens? In the amendment, these processes should be one year before the elections, and in February, the campaign is supposed to start. So what's going to happen, Mr. President is going to say, on technical grounds, you know, it is not up to one year, so it's time bad, let's manage what we have, and then they would have clapped for themselves. Oh, we've succeeded in playing the Nigerian people. But I want to tell them a very sad news for them. We understand the game, and we know what's going on, okay. and we are not going to let it be. All right, uh, let's move away from the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Uh, we'll be looking at the Daily Independent newspaper now. Uh, a boy state government to inaugurate a Bubuagu regional security outfit. Do you think that that will go a long way in, you know, curbing the insecurity concerns or sort of the security issues in the region? Yeah, I, I think it, it's a positive. I thought they had done that long ago because, you know, this Ebubayagu had come up a while back. But I guess probably they were looking at the funding structures and other things. So I think it's better late than never. The way the things are now, security is being left in our hands. As, as, as the federal government is not giving us what we want, for one reason or the other, good or bad, the, state, the regionals are taking uh, their own steps and it's going right down to the individuals. We are all starting as individuals to be our local security providers to decide where to go, how to go, whether to go in a mass or to go as individuals. Nigerians have actually, it has come down to not just the, the state or the regional level, it's come down to personal level where security is no longer taken for granted. You can't just wake up and say, oh, I'm, I'm going one place or the other in my country. You have to sit down, make a lot of calls, plan and plot, and um, if possible, like um, the story about the NYSC, you carry some ransom, you know? Uh, so that there can be instant appeasement. You know, it's like, please take this, let me go, and things like that. It's sad, and I look forward to when that should be a story that was told in the past. All right, and of course, on the punch this morning, there's uh, talk about the 2022 budget. 
17.126 trillion naira. It says National Assembly to transmit 17 trillion naira budgets to Buhari today. And that's from Ahmed Lawan. Uh, Mr. Yang, talk uh, anything exciting about the budget? Absolutely none. Absolutely none. If you, you know, I've contested election twice, like I said, and the very first one, for the first time almost in my life, I had migraine for about three days. I can go for three months, let me not exaggerate and say six months, without having headache. I never have it, but I had, I had migraine, terrible headache for about three days. Because when you look at the budget, take the budget of Nigeria, look at what was passed, and then go back and look at the implementation. You realize that the budget is just a ritual, it's just a piece of paper that nobody takes serious, down to the state level. And I think it's even worse at the state level. You realize that there's a subhead that had maybe about, um, say, uh, 800 million, uh, and another one that had about um, maybe 50 million. At the end of the day, in terms of implementation, you know, they hide things and they make it, it's a game for them. Governance has become a big game for the players. It's not, it's not what it ought to be. You discover that the one that had about 800 million, the release is maybe about 20 or 30 million. But the one that had 50 million, you realize that the spend has gone up to maybe about seven or 800 million. So it's just a, a manipulative kind of piece of paper that they throw to the public and then the public looks at it and debates it, debates it. At the end of the day, go and look at the implementation. You know, the cash release is what really matters at the end of the day, environment and things like that. And they have a good relationship between the Office of the Accountant General, the National Assembly, the Presidency, or at the state level, we talk about uh, the budget office, yes, and then maybe the House of Assembly and the, the governor's office. These guys have an understanding to play Nigerians. That's why in Akwaibon, for instance, we set up a special group where we did the budget monitoring. And what came up was almost scandalous. And um, I think that the time has come when citizens should actually come in and be a lot more interested in the affairs of state and put pressure on the system to do what they ought to do. These are not our lords. They are our managers recruited by us, and they ought to fear us instead of us fearing them. So I'm not as excited as I should be about the budget because I really don't see what I should be excited about. If they had given education something like 20%. I'll say, yeah, we're thinking. Have you noticed something? Have you noticed that the tech investors, the fintech, they are moving into Nigeria in droves. And as of today, we have about four unicorns. Go to Lagos, come to your, go to some of these tech you know, um, um, units. You see how much foreigners are coming into Nigeria and they are so interested in Nigeria tech subsector. Have you noticed that our government don't even know anything about what's going on? Just think about it. They take the IT subsector. People are coming, look at the unicorns and ask me, how did they get there? How did they get bought at those prices? How did these people get to know where is the government? This is one area that the government would have said, wow, this makes a lot of sense. Do you know what it means for you to be a unicorn? Do you know what it means for you to get those things resident here and go out of your way to create our own what we call Silicon Valley? Come to a place like Uyo where you have some of the brightest, best IT guys and set up this infrastructure where you will be able to rake money in the billions in dollars. Okay. We don't have thinking government, cerebral governance. All they do is budget, oil, share. Meanwhile, there's a bigger cake. I look forward to when we start to recruit you know, managers that understand governance and harness the resources that we have. Okay, um, the federal government okays implementation of new national development plan. Does this sound like uh, a cherry news? No, not to me. You see, it's all the same thing. We run a governance and a system where your administration goes with you. And if you understand that, two things should happen. When you get into office, within your first year, you have four years. Do even if you want to do a 10-year development plan in your first year. So that by the time you run your four years, you have gotten the buy-in of the people in the consistency, in the paradigms, you understand me, in the infrastructure of that development plan. 
by the time you get into four years, you really need to a stage where there is an animation of we the people in that plan. There's a buy-in of the people. So much so that even if you live in four years, it has almost entered an auto drive. But you do this with less than two years to go. Who is going to implement your, your plan? The new person is going to come in and think in terms of his own legacy, so to speak. So they should concentrate on finishing strong. Forget about the year 2023. Forget about it. Concentrate on where you are now and how you are going to exit on a blaze of glory. That is my honest advice to them. All this uh, development plan of five years. Who are you leaving that for? If PDP takes over tomorrow or if ADC takes over tomorrow, what are you going to say? You're going to bind them to it? Meanwhile, we don't have a believability in it. In the six years you've done, to what extent have we believed in it for us to say, oh, no, 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 we can see the consistency. Even if you want to change, look at something like, I always bring this in. In, in Cross River State, Mr. Donald Duke started this concept of Calabar Carnival. He sat on it as if his life depended on it. He created it to come into an automotive version. And even when the next governor came in, it became very difficult for you to just, even when they tried to do a few things, we're like, ah, no, 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 no. no. The citizens had come to buy into it, not just cross riverian but people from outside, and it has become a culture. How did that happen? There was a vision, there was a consistency, there was a believability. There was, you know, these principles that make people to say, this makes sense. And today, how many years after, the only consistent thing in Nigeria that came from 1999 is Kaleba Carnival. How did that happen? Well, um, you know, over time we've continued to hear of Vision 2020 and Vision 2000 and the likes, Vision 2010, there's been so much of them. Uh, Millennium Development Goals also, um, you know, and, and it doesn't seem like any of them actually takes off or leads anywhere. So, you know, I, th I think, you know, our viewers will agree with you. Uh, that, uh, you know, this doesn't seem to be exciting. Uh, but one more thing we will talk about on the leadership newspapers. Uh, there's something from former President Tulushego Basanjo and uh, Sultan. It says, uh, convene reconciliation, confab now. OBJ and uh, Sultan tell President Muhammadu Buhari, saying security driven largely by, by social injustice and failed economy. Zayantok, um, do we need another reconciliation confab or do we just need... Uh, you know, the government to do what is necessary and justice, you know, uh, you know across the system. I, I, I always talk, maybe because I'm an architect, I talk from foundational standpoint. And the question is, what is a nation? Unless you know what game you are going to play, you cannot kit yourself for it. If you're going to play golf, there are certain outfits you cannot wear. If you are going to swim, you can't go with your jacket. The same thing. If you're having a nation, the question is, what is a nation? And what are the fundamentals? What are the basics? What are the paradigms, the things you cannot do without? In a nation, one word that stands out is equality. Equality of all citizens. Equality. You've got to know that the different nationalities that come together to form that nation, every individual is equal. And the best way that kind of illustrates equality in Nigeria, if it was done right, is voting, where it is one man, one vote. It doesn't matter whether you are Dangote, it doesn't matter whether you are Pabio, it doesn't matter whether you are Ngaito, it's one man, one vote. I hope, yes, I hope my, 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 this year has not. So based on that foundation, then we are able to discuss based on equality, based on equity, based on fairness. And as at today, the, 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 the gap between us, the fault lines have become almost unacceptable in nationhood. So I think there's a point somewhere when we start to say, let us convoke 
um, a talk shop of some sort where we see to what extent we can have some level of understanding and reconciliation. There is a point, and um, whether this administration can do that, all I want to appeal to Nigerians is try and manage and see to what extent we can just go through this motion. And at the end of the day, let us wise up, wake up, and bring into office people that understand what governance is all about. We should be sick and tired of going through the same route, the same cycles, and achieving nothing. That is what my take would be on the matter for now. All right. Uh, I think at this point in time, it would be okay to say thank you for being part of the conversation. Uh, Ezekiel Yaito is a public affairs analyst. We really appreciate your time and we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts on this platform. And Merry Christmas once Thank again. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless you. Right, Thank then. you. Okay, so uh, we'll just head straight to telling you what happened today in history. Today being the 23rd of December. We'll tell you what happened today. And when we come back, we'll head straight to our first major conversation of the day.